Howdy folks and welcome back. We are starting a new series today on a game called Crash Dive. Now I've always been a fan of submarine simulators way back even when I had uh, a Mac Plus way back in the day. Um, so and you know my most recent and favorite one was Silent Hunter 3. I have not given it up yet. I still play the game. Um, but here on the iPad is uh, Sub Simulator on the go. I really like it. So far, I've done uh, one portion of a of a mission, and it starts you out on easy, and then you medium, and on and on from there. So uh, I've got a replay here with um, the first uh, part of scenario one. Let's take a look at that. All right, folks, here we go. Started a brand new mission on the easy level. We've left Lorient, France. It's our home base, and we are headed out looking for convoy. So, and one is spotted. Four transports, no escorts. Yes, you bet. We would like to have a look at this. <laughs> Sounds a bit easy, doesn't it? Okay. Okay, we've got an aircraft carrier. Looks like a few transports on that. Blast out a torpedo. I mean, you notice the targeting line in the bottom of your screen is yellow, 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 till you hit. There, target solution. If you are not quite having the right solution there, it'll go red, tell you you're out of your firing arc. When you look on the extreme right bottom of your screen, it looks like a compass symbol there, and a green slice of pie. The front of your ship, if you hit that button, your front of your ship will align with the center of that green view, and you will be able to get a, a firing uh, solution. Now, it's sometimes, okay, there we go, targeted. Had two hits in the aircraft carrier already. Now this is pretty easy. Some ships take one hit. Depends where you hit them as well. Every time they're saying they're going down, poof, they send out a star shell. Bigger ships I find take, uh, well, two minimum, sometimes four torpedoes. This aircraft carrier is the Yorktown class aircraft carrier, USS Hornet. Ship down there, he's sinking already. Good sharp. Yeah, we're gonna end up four torpedoes into the Hornet here. Now we're on easy, so the torpedoes load very quickly. You know, everything's really arcade on the easy level, it seems. Um, it's still uh, interesting though, and what we haven't seen here yet is uh, escorts and stuff, and believe me, they're coming. And they're pretty good so yeah and nice nice looking ship models nice looking water um, ships going down and you know I, I used to other sub sims I, I would rather have maybe a, a free camera option which would be nice um, I've been talking to the developer of the game and uh, gonna get to see if he can answer some questions about maybe the roadmap of the game and that sort of stuff hello mr. transport okay let's tap that compass button and realign sub with our slice of view range in this game you can only have your torpedoes fire within a certain uh, arc of the front of your ship and if what you're looking at is not within the arc of the front of your ship making makes sense that it can't hit that target can't get you a firing solution um, and I believe that's for game balance more than anything because uh, because the torpedoes fire so darn quick it's uh, you know, this game is very much for the mobile market so that you know while you're on the bus on the train whenever you've got like five ten minutes you could play a little bit of this game nice thing about this game is you can save pause for later so I mean you can play a little bit and uh, put it away until you've got time to play it again ship going down propeller still turning pretty good ship models I like it zoom back out and if you want to go to get a really good uh, learning curve on all these controls that are here, it's really easy to, to play this game. Um, oh, now we're back to our extended thing. Looks like we might run into a convoy, depending how old that report was. Oh, yes. Seven transports, one escort. We have 18 torpedoes and 185 deck gun shells. Let's go get them. As I was saying, if you want to get a quick tutorial on this there's great tutorials within the game itself there's also a quick um, 
control sheet on the website at panicensuesoftware.com. I'll put a link in the uh, video description. Okay. Now that's the biggest ship out there. That looks like an ocean liner, a big, fat, juicy target. One we definitely want. We're gonna give him the two torpedo treatment in the moment, see what that does. Oh no, three torpedoes, even better. <laughs> uh, we got her. these torpedoes load really fast, so you can afford to be fairly liberal in their dispensing. Yeah, so we go in there. Need to realign the sub with our view range here. Yeah, there we go. Let's get that turning. We have a solution. Ship going down. We have an escort in the extreme right of our view inbound. I'm going to realign the sub here. Let's see if we can get a solution on him. He's a long way out. You know, they're very fast maneuverable. Chances of hitting him. And he's swerving too, but we'll give it a shot. Never know. If we get lucky on that, we're in good shape. This guy's sinking, sinking. Ooh, more ships in the convoy. Further back. And because this is on easy, I didn't really try for many tactics. Uh, they always start you up fairly close, so you don't really get a lot of choices on your approach. Um, now we're into uh, evading death. This guy's getting close. We're up to flank speed. And we are turning our boat five degrees at a time. The other thing you can do is just touch the screen where you want to be and your boat will make the turn. This guy, you can see there I did that. You get the green arc. Bam, now we're going the way I want to. The red thing's closing in. He's dropping depth charges. We are on uh, flank speed to get out of their way before they explode. We've gone down to 100 meters. That gives you far more time between the time the depth charge hits the surface of the water and gets down to the level where you are where it's going to explode. You can be much farther away from that explosion at that point. So depth and stealth is what it saves the day uh, when it comes to evading depth charges. Now we're lucky here. We only have one escort to deal with. And it looks like we've got a few other transport's coming up. We're going to try and stay in their traffic lane to uh, befuddle the escort as much as possible so that he can't, uh, hopefully he won't ram his own ships. So we've got two more coming in on here too, so we're going to stay in there until hopefully we lose this guy. He is pinging us at the moment. What you like to do, what I'm really testing the escort right now by not doing, is present your minimum profile to them, so your narrowest, your butt or your head to the ping if you can. The broader uh, cross-section of your sub that you display to the incoming sonar pulse, the better chance of it reflecting back to the uh, escort. Now he hasn't quite zeroed us obviously because he's dropping depth charges where we are not. We have, we do not have any motors running. Okay, then we're going to go forward here a little bit. See where he's going. Ah, we're getting too close to those depth charges. We're going to back up. At least all stop. We'll go backwards a little bit. Okay, I think we avoided those depth charges pretty nicely. And we're still at 100 meters. But not having much momentum, we have to be pretty careful here at the moment. Ship passing just off to our left side there. Ooh, he goes right over us. Oh, and right through I see <laughs> there's a little I'm not sure how much befuddling I'm doing staying in their thing if he can just drive through them but okay he's pinging us again not a bad profile for bounce back oh looks like we bounced one back at him now when we stop moving we generate less noise we have a much wider sound detection area you notice right now that on we're down to about maybe 900 meters it looks like when we turn our motors off that that uh, zone around us expands far more sensitive oh we bounced a good ping back at him there not so good okay depth 
charges dropping again. We are evading them fairly successfully here at the moment. We have taken no damage. Ah, and there's that giant ocean liner. You can see three smoky hits on his side there. What we're going to want to do, we still want to get all these ships if we can. If we can evade the destroyer or escort or whatever he is. Okay, we've got three ships so far. 17,000 tons, that's nice. But if we can evade the escort long enough, they will give up and go back and take their uh, position again to protect the convoy or try and detect uh, subs incoming. And they won't come back for us unless we cause some more trouble back here, but we intend to cause more trouble. And we're just going to wait for this guy to wear out. We've come up to 50 meters, just trying to change our depths. These last uh, depth charges are since his last uh, lock onto us, they're probably set much deeper. So they explode on a different level. That's fine. It's all part of uh, not being there when that thing explodes. Right. Just changing our depth back and forth a little bit. Now, I have not read the tutorial yet on evasion and, that, and stealth. I will be doing that shortly, go through it. I'm just using uh, what tactics I have learned from other sub simulators, say like Silent Hunter 3 and that sort of thing. He's pinging us again. He is turning tightly upon us. Oh, and uh oh, let's get out of here. Flank speed. Let's make turn out of the way and get away from those. Oh, flooding. Severe flooding. Now your damage and repair stuff comes up on the right hand side of your screen. You'll notice our motors are damaged, our aft torpedo is damaged, and we have quite bad flooding. Our depth is increasing rapidly. I've hit the uh, ascend button so that they'll turn the dive planes to a surfacing position. It's still not helping us. We are crashing to a dangerous depth pretty quick. You can see that blue coming up through our depth. Oh. Our descent is slowing. We're getting the flooding under control. Down to 168 meters. Flooding is fixed. We will now start to ascend. I'm going to knock that back down. We do not want to blast out of the surface. Put it at 10 at the moment. We're now working on our motors. We can only do a head slow right now because the motors are damaged. Now we've actually cranked it down to slow. You'd I noticed the engine noise changed when we did that. You would have thought the engine noise would already be on the slow noise at that time. Minor issue. Ooh, we've sent another ping back to him. In the traffic lane of these boats. You notice that the ocean liner is, seems to be quite damaged. He's barely moving. We're, we're going to get him for sure. As long as we can evade this guy. Our aft torpedo is now being repaired. Every time one of your uh, damaged items repairs, you get that zing ding ding, the bell sound, like an engine telegraph. Sounds good. And just alerts you to the fact that something's been repaired if you were tunnel visioned onto uh, what else is going on, i.e., we've been spotted on sonar again. We are diving down to 100 meters again. Depth charges are being dropped. Flank speed and a, and a hard turn. didn't zero us though, so his uh, his spotting of us was not super precise. I don't know if this game follows the most other games where, you know, sonar cannot be, pings cannot be detected, or rep replies cannot be re detected by the escort from the back of their ship. Uh, due to the, all the noise that's back there from the propellers and that sort of thing. So when they present their uh, stern to you, you, you can now you can use that moment to get some speed and make a little more distance away from this uh, area where he thinks you are. I noticed that uh, your these things turn extremely fast in this game. I know it's set up more arcadish for uh, the mobile market. I do wish that there. Oh, when we get up to like medium different uh, hardness and simulator and that sort of thing, I'm hoping that these things will change away from so much in the arcade area. 
but I'm not sure if it will. We will find out though. So we are at 100 meters of depth. I have not used any decoys yet. And I don't think I will on this. I'm doing quite well without them. I'll save them until I need them. I'll use them eventually just so we can see how they work, but uh, not right away. 100 meters seems like a fairly good depth. You have. Uh, you don't make much noise there. And if you're really lucky, you'll be under a thermal layer in the water. I'm not sure if this game... Uh, oh, we're going down a little deeper. 125. I'm not sure if this game takes into account thermal layers or not. I have many questions for the developer. And uh, hopefully he will be able to respond to those. So we're now at 125 meters. We are at flank speed getting away from those depth charges. Shut the engine off and we'll coast at the moment with the momentum that we've generated here. Hopefully this guy will not lock on to us again. We do need him to uh, bug off, so to speak, <laughs> so we can uh, get back to the business of sinking ships. Just dropping depth charges again. They, we are out of range of those. I'm not too worried about them. Even sure what depth he may have dropped them and set them for exploding at. They do not sound extremely close. All the while, you can see here on the lower part of the screen, it uh, statistics going by about uh, how far away this contact is, his heading, his bearing, and some other information. What class of ship? He's a flower class Corvette. He displaces 925 tons. And he is the FFL Mimosa. Dropping more depth charges. We are still coasting away. Oh, yeah. We're maintaining our three knots by going uh, all head slow here. We're at 150 meters, which is getting probably to the limits of our Type 7C sub well past the dockyard certificate at least anyway <laughs> yeah the other ships that uh, we're getting away they are outside of our sound range so we just have their it shows their projected course from their last known heading which is nice the uh, ocean liner is uh, sticking with us now you can see that oh he's just about worn himself out. He's so far away when he's dropping those things. Alright, he's given up on us. Now, if we don't screw this up, don't make any noise. Sit here coasting. Quietly. We'll let him go by, and then we're going to pop up and uh, finish off that ocean liner. That's a great, fat, juicy target. Really bump up. Now, we're just going to crank up the time scale here. So nobody wants to wait for this stuff. Ain't nobody got time for debt. Okay, as soon as he goes by. Yeah, destroyers totally left us alone. Sorry, Corvette. Okay, ah, that ocean liner is getting by. Let's see here. Let's crank out the, uh, pick up some speed so we can maintain pace. Now, let's crank back that time scale and bring up the uh, periscope. Zzz, bam. Well, hello there. You're quite a mess. It's the Mauritania. It's a ship from uh, back in the Titanic's day. I am sorry to say that your days are numbered on top of the water. Oof. And the Mauritania is going down. It sends up a shell. Now, very likely that is going to draw back the escort. Where are you, Mr. Escort? I'm sure that you are out there. Wow, look at that, eh? Tipping right up in the air. Explosions. Not seeing that escort out there yet. Oh, oh, wow. Well, just about vertical. And sliding downward beneath the waves. There it goes. Yep, big ship going down. Too bad. It's only a computer ship, but... <laughs> okay. 
Well, I didn't let it go all the way, which is too bad. Would have liked to watch that more. And I, I like the debris effects on the water. Looks nice. Looks like there's been a wreck out there. Boxes and such floating around. Now, I still don't see here. We'll have to adjust our view of the map. See if we've got... Oh, yeah. There's the escort. Pinging furiously. There he is now. We're going to see if we can get a solution on him. Take that shot. Over a minute. It's not entirely likely to hit. Because in a minute he is probably going to zigzag a bit. We seem a little off course already. I think I'll probably send another one out after him. Well, maybe he'll turn into that one. His range is now under 2,000 meters. Two kilometers. Don't see anybody else out there but him. Now we'll give him one more. Oh, that other one might actually... Oh, <laughs> we got him with the first one. Okay, so we wasted the second one, but that's okay. The aim is to not die. Yeah, look at that debris floating in the water. It looks great. Yeah, he's uh, going down. And that suits me just fine. What we're going to have to do now is decide if it's worth going after those three ships or disengage and hunt for another convoy. Oh, there's an empty lifeboat. My goodness. Yep, down goes the escort. I think what we're going to do, they're not that far away. We're either going to surface, crank ourselves up to flank speed eventually, and uh, kind of do an end run around them. They're going on a certain course. We'll get our speed up and we'll uh, swing out, go by hopefully in a distance where we can just spot them and keep an eye on them where they won't see us because we're much smaller, harder to spot, and carry on past them and then turn in and await their arrival in a great position in order to sink them all. They're unescorted at this point so oop, overshot, ooh, overshot it again, there we go, 16 times. We are doing 19 knots. I'll just swing out so we can put some distance between us and them on this side. If that gets to be good enough, we will uh, no, turn back. Now we're going straight. We're going to close this gap as soon as possible. So nobody likes to wait for all these things. Yeah, and we're clear. Okay, he's within the visual range. Let's branch out again, because that guy will really be within range. We do not want to get spotted and have them change course or start zigzagging. Crank it down to one, uh, oop, nope, this way, one X. Let me see here. They are three and a half kilometers away. It's too far for a reliable shot anyway. Yeah, good water effects. Not bad at all. Different uh, interesting sky graphics. I notice we have like morning, noons, and, and nighttime stuff. Alright, let's go back up to 16. So I'll get too excited about it. Okay, now we're kind of getting more abreast of them, and we'll make the turn. Come in. Alright, I don't want to get too close though. So. Keep rolling. See down at the bottom there? Periscope is up. Batteries are charged. Tubes are loaded. We have nine torpedoes remaining. Our deck gun has only 85 shells. We have 10 decoys. I don't know if we're going to need them now. Depth is zero. And we're going to make our turn in. And when we get close enough. Still at eight times. Time acceleration. Still at eight. We've stopped our engines. Now we're down to. Uh, uh, ooh, ah. Let's see here. Can we get a solution on this guy? 
All right, all stop. 18. The other guy's pretty far away. 2.7 kilometers. Under 2 kilometers, 1,990 meters. We get a solution, we can. I think we're going to, uh, yeah, let's move in a little bit. We are now periscope down. They're under the water. They have no sonar. We should go undetected. Should be an issue. We'll crank that speed up a bit. While well, we close the range a little bit more. Okay. Now you can see that. Uh, put the periscope back up. Now we'll look. We have about 1.7 kilometers or so. Oh, yep, yeah, just about. Give him one. This guy's quite a bit closer. He's just over a kilometer. Give him one. Now the other guy, we're probably going to have to adjust our sub position as well. We should be good now, though. And yeah, we'll give him the business. Now, we should have shot the furthest one first. And then the second closest, and then the very closest. And that way, you can time your shots as close as possible to happen at the same time so that one gets a hit, the other ones don't change course and screw up your firing solution. So I totally did that one wrong, but we're on easy and uh, it's quite forgiving <laughs> in those ways. There, he's kaboomed. That guy's tipping over on his size, capsizing. Yeah, nice ship models too. Really good for mobile. Oh, got a hole on the back of that dude. Now, I. He's hit, damaged, not going down yet though. That guy's gone already. These ships sink very quickly. Again, I'm hoping for more realism as we move up the ranks towards simulator and that sort of thing. This guy obviously needs one more. And we're gonna have to align our boat. Our view a bit better, there we go. Got the targeting solution. Still almost one and a half kilometers away. He's doing six knots, but he's damaged, otherwise I'm sure he'd be going faster. So it should not be much difficulty to hit this guy one more time. One other thing I've noticed, at the easy level, you cannot move your crosshairs to where you want the torpedo to hit the ship. It uh, always seems to target for the center, and whether it gets there or not, it's dependent upon your firing solution that it was generated and then if there's been any changes to the environment since you made that uh, firing solution. Okay, we've got him dead center practically. So uh, he made a little turn which decreased his forward momentum relative to us and that's why we hit him slightly ahead of the stack there. And he is rolling over. Oh, here are those bulkheads squashing. Death knell sounds. Wow, we have 91,000 tons already. That's crazy. Some U boat commanders never got that in their whole career. Okay, disengage and move off to our initial uh, point where we were supposed to get to. And, uh, oh, and there's a transport. Two escorts. Yeah, let's engage them. Awooga! Okay, how far away is this guy? Wow, he's quite far. But we'll let him have a couple torpedoes. And we're gonna drop our periscope and we're gonna go dark down to 100 meters and hopefully totally avoid those escorts. As soon as that ship is hit, the escorts will start homing in on our position. They'll follow the uh, vapor trails back to where they think we might be. I am turning the boat at the moment. Oh, now let's see. We want to have a look. Yeah, the uh, torpedo tracks running there look like they are in line. The solution looks like it was good. So far, that means that guy has not changed any speed or directions. Doesn't appear the direction. Nice straight line. All right, let's have a quick look. 
Oh yeah, this is gonna look good here. Poof, two hits. He's going down, and now we need to get down deep underwater. Before, here they come. They are coming at us. So we're gonna get down, and we're gonna turn and try and get away from this central point that they're headed to. They are coming in at light speed though. They cannot ping us from that distance, they can hear us on their sonar, though. Sorry, they're, uh, yeah. Listening devices, they are coming. We're down to slow. We've got uh, three knots of momentum. By the time they get here, we'll be quite far away. We're at 125 meters now as well. We'll be quite far away from that initial point where they were trying to find us. You can hear them pinging away, pinging away. It's not good enough to uh, get a pong <laughs> back from our hull. Yeah, we are just all ahead slow at the moment, down to 150 meters. Wouldn't want to go too much deeper than that. I can hear them. You hear their propellers, they're getting close when you can hear their propellers. They're on high speed and uh, Charging and here come them, pinging, pinging. They are searching hard for us. You can see where their lines are going to intersect. That's where we were. And if they don't detect us at the moment, that is where they are going to start dropping their stuff. We're going to swing our boat around a bit, present a more minimal aspect to their sonar, and swing back as they get going by us. Depth charge is dropping well behind us. They don't have a clue exactly where we are or what depth we're at, so we're going to make, uh, I think we'll make our getaway here. Boy, these guys got nothing but ash cans to drop on us, holy cow. They are pinging again. At this depth, Fairly low speed, we're fairly quiet. Yeah, look at those guys circle. They have a very tight turning radius. It's very hard to outmaneuver them. Well, it appears they have given up. And since there seems to be a timer when they start to give up, the longer range they are away from you when they decide it's time to hunt you down, the more their time seems to expire before they get to you, and if they don't reconnect with you, uh, you won't have to endure this hunting very long. Now we're just going to be nice and quiet, slowly bob our way up closer to the surface, and hopefully they don't seem very excited now at all. They're going to get out of our sound range there. So as you can see, we've probably got about yeah, well, not about, about 1.25 kilometers, 1,250 meter um, sound range where we can actually determine what type of ship it is. After that, things get a lot more vague and bubbly. Now they are getting to be a long way away. So as soon as we crank our engines on, our sound detection range goes down. Yeah, we're out to one and a half kilometers with no engines running. We're at, uh, at our 10 meters, put the periscope up, swing it around, there's our adversaries there. I think we're going to find that, uh, yeah, they're over two kilometers away. They could be hit with a torpedo. Got one loaded in the aft tubes, but only one. And that is just going to bring them, the other one, back. I think I'd like to... Uh, disengage from these guys when uh, when it's available. There's no real uh, profit in fighting escorts. Let's see if they'll let us do it. Yep, our scorecard. Boy, a 14,000 ton Liberty, Liberty ship. Disengage from this convoy. Yes, please. Ooh, and there we go. Okay, we have successfully disengaged. Let's have a look at our total overall score at the moment here. 
150,000 tons. Okay, I think that's where we're going to cut this uh, thing off. Our ship, three torpedoes, no damage. And yeah, let's uh, just be done with that for the time being. We'll do another episode soon. All right, let's head back to the U-boat bunker and uh, discuss. All right, now that we're back, safely back in the U-boat uh, bunker. Um, yeah, I think this game has a lot of potential. Even on easy, it, it's still quite fun to play. The graphics are pretty good. I see it's got a lot of features in there that uh, I'll be checking out and uh, bringing to your attention as we go along. I did get an email back from the developer, and uh, I was looking at some, asked him a few questions about uh, whether what's the roadmap and such, and he says right now it's just bug fixes and stability, which is good. You want a nice, current, uh, stable platform to play on. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, easy difficulty. Yeah, I was saying about uh, how you know you start so close to the battle and all that. He says easy difficulty is designed to place you in close to optimal attack location. The higher difficulties make the initial placement more difficult, like being further away, convoy moving away from you, etc. Uh, let's see here. And in the time lapse, when you're on the really zoomed out patrol map, like when it shows the Atlantic Ocean, yeah, I asked him if there was a way to reduce the uh, scale there. He says there is not. It's fixed. But you can, if you tap on your sub, or very close to it, it, you can stop it from sailing. And at that point, though, your, well, your, what does it say here? Your fuel consumption goes down 90%, but also your chance of running into a convoy goes down by 90%. You're not moving. You have, they have to come to you. So that's why that is. So that's uh, just a few extra things there. Um, yeah, I'll be doing more videos on this. So if you like this one, please consider hitting the thumbs up underneath. That would be great. And if you really like the videos we do, why not subscribe? You'll get a notice every time we put a new one up. That way you don't miss out the new content. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you next time.